I mean to fight this war and win it. The hype for Max's House of the Dragon Season 2 has been through the roof since the first season ended, but with the release of the black and green trailers, we expect it to skyrocket. On one side, we've got Rhaenyra being the Dragon Queen we know and love, who looks like she might end up regretting what she started. We've got her eldest Jace coming into his own as a young prince and dragon lord. We've got Daemon threatening to turn those who don't bend the knee into Westeros' barbecue. On the other, we have Alicent losing hair due to work stress, Aemon wanting a shot at his uncle and Aegon, who's just too eager for war. And both trailers feature a lot of dragons. In this video, we're going to break down everything we saw in the trailers and give you guys a preview of what to expect from Season 2, so stick around till the end. And spoiler alert if you haven't read Fire and Blood, because there'll be a lot of those in this video. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, <laughs> it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I mean to fight this war and win it. The fallout from Season 1 and Rhaenyra's intentions for war. The opening shots of the black trailer show as Rhaenyra dressed in all black, Daemon walking around in a dingy hallway, one of the Cargill twins slamming his sword on someone and the bloodworm screaming in the rain. Each of these shots are references to some of the biggest developments that are going to take place on the black side, so let's look at them individually, starting with Rhaenyra's all black dress. Turns out, she isn't trying to be gothy like most Targaryens do with their outfits, she's in mourning. The Black Queen lost her second eldest, Lucerys, in the final episode of Season 1. The Princeling and his dragon were killed by Aemon and Vhagar in the battle above Shipbreaker Bay. When Rhaenyra got the news at the end of Episode 10, she was overcome with grief that she couldn't express fully, because she wasn't just a mother now, she was also a queen. Rhaenyra knows she has to be the strength of her people, so she buries her tears in the graveyard of rage. And the first few shots we see from the trailer after the title card flashes depict her and the blacks gathered around a funeral pyre, which obviously belongs to Lucerys. What's interesting here is Rhaenyra's stone-faced expression. She isn't crying or being her usual emotional self. She's just staring at the pyre, her eyes filled with sorrow and grief. While the Targaryen colors are red and black, Rhaenyra is wearing a funeral attire here, so that's her all-black outfit explained. And instead of letting Luke's death break her, the Black Queen is turning it into her strength instead. Rhaenyra is determined to get the throne her father meant for her to have, but she's in a precarious position. Her claim is only as legitimate as the lords who recognize it in the first place, and besides, her immediate allies aren't nearly enough to win a war. Even in Season 1, Rhaenyra's war council was urging her to come to a diplomatic solution to the war to come, but she makes it clear that that's a pipe dream after Alicent and her son stole her throne. The Black Queen will fight this war, and she'll win it with her dragons. We see multiple shots of Cyrax, Rhaenyra's personal mount during this sequence. The pair are flying to Dragonstone at the Dragonstone Beach inside the Dragon Mount. The Black Queen and her fellow fire-breathing steed are going to be involved in at least some of the action, but they'll not be fighting directly, well, at least not in this season. In the books, Rhaenyra and Cyrax don't come into play until the Black's assault on King's Landing, which is quite a ways away yet. But we know HOTD has taken liberties with the storyline, and Rhaenyra's direct involvement in the war could be one of them. The Diplomatic Prince and the Rogue King Jace goes north, and Daemon burns the Riverlands. One of the best parts of this trailer is the growth of Jaceris Valerian, and we don't even get to see him on screen properly. But we do get a few shots of the snowy lands of the north, and it looks like we're about to get to Castle Black before that Jon Snow spin-off series arrives, because there's a shot of a couple of lordlings walking the battlements of the wall. As Jace tells someone, presumably Lord Craig and Stark, that the realm will tear itself apart if their oaths to Viserys and Rhaenyra are not upheld. Jace's diplomatic aptitude at such a young age just goes to show you how great of a king he could become in the future. Craig and Stark is a notoriously tough man to get on your side, and him securing the North for Rhaenyra is what will end up changing the tide of this war towards its conclusion. In the books, Jace's visit to the North is made to seem more colourful, what with there being rumours he hooked up with a Stark girl and whatnot, but we're not sure that will translate to the show. What will is him managing to convince the Old Wolf to join his rightful queen. But while Jace is taking the diplomatic route, his new stepfather prefers the old ways, fire and blood. At the end of Season 1, Daemon Targaryen proposed an all-out attack on the Riverlands as a means of capturing key territories before their enemies can. The Riverlands are situated in the middle of Westeros. They connect every other reign of the continent, so holding it would give either side a major advantage. Daemon wanted to begin the assault at Harrenhal, and it looks like he does just that in Season 2 just without Rhaenyra's permission. The rogue prince has always marched to the beat of his own drum, and that isn't going to change for a war that will literally make him king. So he takes his forces to the Riverlands and does exactly what he said he was going to do, capture Harrenhal. All those shots of Daemon in his gorgeous armor, standing in the rain inside a dreary-looking castle, yep, that's Harrenhal. 
and him warning people to bend the knee or see their house burnt to death, well, that's also something he does when he takes Harren Hall in the books. But the significance of this location isn't just historical or militant, it's foreshadowing for one of the biggest dragon fights to come in the series, Daemon vs. Aemond. Fans have noticed the similarities between the two Targaryens. Heck, so have they. In the green trailer, Aemon tells Kristen that he welcomes the challenge that his uncle poses, if he dared cross him, that is. These two are easily the most combustible elements of their respective armies, so them butting heads at some point is inevitable. And in Fire and Blood, that inevitable battle takes place at Harrenhal, where two mighty dragons fight to the death in the rain. Caraxes vs. Vega is going to be one of the most epic sequences in TV history, but we're not sure if we'll get the actual fight itself in this season. We will, however, be getting the setup for it, so huh, keep your eyes peeled. We fight for our queen. The Battle of Rook's Nest, Rhaenyra's Regret, and all of the dragons. While gathering allies is important, the key element to winning a war is actually fighting it, and Rhaenyra is going to have to reconcile the fact that war causes death and despair like nothing else in the world. At one point in the trailer, she's told by her to be Hand of the King Corollus Valerian that the Greens are marching and they need to cut off his campaign at its head. This is a reference to the fact that Aegon is the one to make the first military move in this war. In the books, King Aegon begins his campaign by marching through the Crownlands and taking over territory that's declared for Rhaenyra. Those who resist are given the choice between swearing fealty or death, and some end up taking the latter route. Corlys knows that if they want to win, they'll need to cut off this advance before it takes hold, because the High Towers have many advantages. Lands, gold, allies in great houses, uh, you name it. And Rhaenyra only has one, dragons. But that itself is going to be a game changer, as you can tell from the many shots of the likes of Daemon, Baylor, and others riding their mounts into battle. The scenes of carnage we see taking place at a castle are likely from the Battle of Rook's Rest, and one of the key battles of the Dance of the Dragons. While her other counselors are urging her to move quick, only one is preaching caution, and that is Rhaenys, who earns Rhaenyra of the power of bloodlust. When the blood flows, men forget the reason they began spilling it in the first place, and Rhaenys is about to discover that the hard way. Her involvement in the Battle of Rook's Rest will give the Blacks one of their biggest military setbacks, as they end up temporarily losing the support of one of their biggest sponsors. Perhaps that's why she says that she fears what she's begun at the end of the trailer, because she can't stop the rivers of blood that will flow because of her war. And, uh, speaking of war, a mother's concern and a false interpretation. The Green Trailer The first shot of the Green Trailer shows as a concerned Alicent staring at Aegon, presumably, and she has good reason to feel that way. Her interpretation of her husband's final words are false. The voiceover for the Green Trailer begins with Alicent recalling the peace her husband has forged in his lengthy reign, but that in itself is a falsehood. Viserys was seen as a noble and kind king, but those traits are often conflated for weakness in Westeros. Daemon was the only one who had the guts to tell Viserys all this to his face, but with the latter gone, who will remember that part of the king's legacy? The answer is simple, no one, and Alison is banking on that fact to give her son's reign the legitimacy it so desperately needs, which is where Viserys' final words become relevant. On his deathbed, the king mumbled Aegon's name while dreaming of previous ancestors and the conqueror's prophecy. Viserys might have been a tame dragon, but he was a dragon nonetheless, and a dreamer at that. It's through him that we now know of Aegon the Conqueror's prophecy and what motivated his conquest, but Alicent has none of that context, only Rhaenyra does. So when Viserys takes her son's name before his death, she takes it to mean he wants his son Aegon on the throne, not Rhaenyra. She tells her personal small council the same thing, and it looks like she's about to tell the actual small council that as well. Alicent claims at the end of the trailer that everything she does is for her house and the realm, which really shows you where the Green's allegiance truly lie. Even after having been a Targaryen's queen for well over a decade, Alison is still a Hightower, and she is still her father's daughter. There's a point in the trailer where she submerges herself in a tub of water, and it feels like Alison just wants to let go of all her burdens. But she's backed herself into a position that escape is no longer an option, and her father knows that too. Otto is keeping at his usual manipulations. He claims that this coming war is not about the good of the realm, but for Rhaenyra's vengeance, which is part true and part false in classic Otto fashion. Otto's grandson killed a prince and his own nephew. Kinslaying is a mortal sin in Westeros, yet Otto can only look at his enemy's transgressions, not his own. But he's about to have a major problem on his hands, because his grandson doesn't really work with the level of patience that he does. The Boy King and his immature obsession with war, Aegon II's early reign. The Aegon we get in the series is different from Aegon in the books, only in the looks department. Tom Glyn Carney is far more attractive than book Aegon, who is said to be pudgy because of how frequently you'd find him in his cups. But personality-wise, they're pretty similar, because both Aegons want to establish their status as king, and they do it with fire. 
and blood. You can tell from the trailer that though Aegon might not have wanted it, once he became king, his whole demeanor changed. The moment where he saunters into the throne room, ignoring his grandfather and just looking at the court as if he owns each and every one of them. <laughs> it's done with such brilliance that even we can't fault Aegon for feeling himself like that. There are other moments in the trailer as well which hint that maybe he's feeling himself a bit too much. Like when he says he's just as fearsome as any of them after stating that he would repay any plots against the king a hundred times over. Presumably in reference to the most infamous Targaryen queens and kings like Maegor the Cruel and Queen Visenya. Or at the end of the trailer, when it looks like Otto and Alicent are trying to make him understand the precariousness of his situation. But all Aegon wants is war. The way he says, good, to war then. It's as if someone is being invited to a tea ceremony. That nonchalant attitude stems from the fact that he thinks his grandfather's methods too patient and ineffectual. In the books, Aegon fires Otto's hand because he's too patient, too diplomatic. He wants someone who has fought in wars and bled in battles to help him secure his own great victory, and he's already got a very willing candidate right in his courtyard. We'll give you a hint. His name rhymes with bowl. We also see a serving woman holding bloody rags, walking through the halls of the Red Keep. This could be a reference to the birth of Aegon's third legitimate child, Prince Maelor Targaryen. The young prince is about to learn the true worth of his life once a particularly gory charcuterie board enters his chambers. But the point we're trying to make here is, in his bid to shower himself in glory, Aegon will end up pushing himself into a corner that he won't be able to walk out of, and we mean that literally, as you'll see in Season 2. Oh, and uh, speaking of glory, fire and blood, black and green the Targaryen Civil War and its effect on the world. The Greens will be even more pissed once they process the blood and cheese fiasco, which will happen this season as we see Helena and Alicent dressed in funeral garb as well, briefly in the black trailer and then in an extended shot in the green trailer. HOTD will have its own version of the Clegane Bowl, but make it more personal because it'll be the Cargill twins duking it out for their respective loyalties. The Bracken and Blackwood rivalry will be crucial to the war effort, as we already know young Lord Blackwood is a badass in his own right from season one. And in the end, the responsibility will be made to look like Rhaenyra's by the Greens, because she's the one who decided to press her claim this hard. In the books, the Black Queen isn't remembered fondly by future generations, and this war is a big reason for that. The show seems to be taking a more introspective approach for her character, as she never expresses this kind of concern in Fire and Blood, and it remains to be seen how well they managed to pull it off in the final product. If Season 1 is anything to go by, we'd say you have nothing to worry about from a narrative standpoint, except for the Dance of Dragons, of course marvelous verdict. But as for this video, that's all we have for you guys. The black and green trailers did a great job of conveying the key plot points for both counts in Season 2, and at this point, June can't come quick enough. But what do you think about these trailers? Huh, let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because we're going to be covering House of the Dragon Season 2 in its entirety. Until then, stay out of family troubles and make right with your long-lost friends, because you never know when they'll end up burnt to a crisp. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. <laughs> Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.